Welcome back. You're watching Startup Central with me, Nantara Rai, working from home. The government has issued a discussion paper on having uniform regulations for fantasy games. It's been done so by the Niti Aayog, inviting public comments and floating this proposal on why there shouldn't be uniform rules that govern fantasy sports. Now, fantasy sports has, of course, been allowed by the Supreme Court of India. In fact, you've seen very large transactions in recent times when it comes to fantasy sports. Remember a couple of months ago, Dream 11, the kind of funds it raised from the likes of Tiger Global, all of that, just ahead of the IPL 13. I'm going to be discussing this and a lot more now with uh, Weber Kakkar, partner at the LLN Law Firm. Weber, it's a pleasure to have you here on this edition of the Startup Central. We've got you here because your exp one of your expertise is, of course, the gaming world. You've done a lot of deals. You, you have a lot of clients that are part of the gaming world. Now, the Niti Aayog is essentially saying that they is floating the proposal rather there should be uniform rules governing fantasy sports and it's come out with certain ideas which are obviously very basic if you're going to have paid to play then the user must be above 18 years old there must be no identity which uh, can be confusing with gambling and all of that and i'll get into the specifics but first up if i could get your reaction on following the supreme court verdict You've seen the mushrooming of startups. Everyone's betting big on gaming. Mukesh Ambani is talking about it, for example, that it could be bigger than e-commerce and all of that. Narendra Modi, in a monkey bath, talked about the potential in gaming. Is this the way to go? And do you think it's possible at all to have uniform rules? Hi, Nandara. Good evening. Thank you for having me over. I think uh, overall, this particular uh, discussion paper that the Niti Aayog has uh, issued uh, is very much a step in the right direction. Uh, we all welcome it. Uh, the skill gaming industry in this country uh, definitely has a lot of potential. Uh, you know, thus far al already it has received a huge amount of foreign direct investment uh, in terms of private equity investors who put in money in this space, uh, you know, which would be in the tune of billions of dollars already. And some of these companies have uh, really very enviable, uh, you know, financials and have done really well for themselves. Uh, unfortunately, what has let down this industry is uh, uh, just the uncertainty around legal issues. Uh, you know, one of the complications that is there is the fact which Niti Aayog paper also recognizes is that uh, unfortunately, betting and gambling as well as sports and gaming, uh, these are matters which are there in the state uh, subject. These are state subjects under the constitution. And what that means is that, unfortunately, therefore, there is no uniform state approach uh, to skill-based gaming. There are some judicial precedents uh, of Supreme Court and various high courts that have validated uh, Fantasy League as well as other games such as Rummy, Bridge, uh, to be games of skill. Uh, however, the challenge is that because, difference, because this is a state subject, different states seem to be following different approaches. And, uh, you know, in recent times, three states... Uh, which is Andhra Pradesh, Telangana and Tamil Nadu very recently, as recent as two weeks back, uh, have banned all forms of online skill-based gaming. Uh, so in that backdrop, I think this discussion paper is extremely welcome. Uh, this will eventually move towards a space where, uh, you know, you actually look at regulation uh, rather than banning uh, every business that is potentially becoming valuable. Uh, so it's a step in the right direction, uh, but of course, uh, still very, very long way to go. In fact, you know, Weber, uh, as far as an investment opportunity goes, the draft paper in the opening letter talking about why it's come out with this draft paper, they say that there's a massive opportunity of nearly 10,000 crore rupees of FDI, which can be raised for fantasy sports. But my question to you also is, and you know, as someone who's involved in deal making for so many startups and all of that, the lack of this uniform regulation has not stopped some of the largest investors in the world in putting in money for fantasy sports in India. So can it really be a game changer? Because if the status quo continues, I'm being devil's advocate here. The money is going to keep coming, jobs will keep getting created, users will keep going up. So I, I, what you raise is a very valid question. However, uh, you know, the, the complication is, 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 in, is, is in the detail. The, the challenge is, as I mentioned to you, eventually, what is the argument that the Niti Aayog is taking in this discussion paper? It is that online fantasy league games are nothing but games of skill. And therefore, they should get safe harbor protection and state government should not launch prosecution uh, under their gambling laws uh, for any business that is operating in that space and is complying with all of the parameters that have been uh, prescribed for in those guidelines. 
the challenge is that as i mentioned to you because this is a state subject and states are always coming from a very different place where then they are trying to target some people and unfortunate as it might be certain state governments have now taken a position that uh, you know skill based gaming industry is leading to a lot of uh, social evils and so on and so forth which personally to my mind having represented a large number of these gaming companies that is coming from a wrong place and ban is not the solution in fact each time you ban uh, you actually end up uh, you know encouraging proliferating illegal websites to be there regulation is the way to go but what's happened is that in the last few months three big states in this country have banned all online skill game based gaming what that will do is it will also attack online fantasy league so for instance uh, all the online fantasy league companies can now as of today not legally offer games in these three states and the fear is that you know if there is no discussion and there is no move of any change in thought process at the center level at the moment one state up the, the other if they continue imposing similar restrictions it will not only impact other skill based gaming industry it will also you know attack online fantasy league so therefore there is a need for some ministries and government machinery at the central level to escalate this matter take it up to come up with some sort of central guidelines which can then lead to a directional change in how states look at it i mean if just a comparable example would be real estate sector real estate is again a state subject matter but eventually you saw the central government coming up with certain guidelines for era and eventually they pushed the entire direction where they came up with one framework under which every state then went about bringing in their own state rara law so i think we can move in that direction but and so in that sense this whole discussion paper is extremely welcome it is nudging all state governments to not look uh, at all of these businesses with the prism of ban however if you were to ask me one thing that i would have definitely liked is for niti ayog not just to focus on fantasy league but also look at other skill based games such as rummy there are supreme court judgments of 1960s that have legitimized rummy to be a game of skill bridge and so on and so forth and there's massive amount of private equity money foreign direct investment that's already come into that business as well so i think it would be imperative that niti ayog looks at it at a slightly more macro level does not singularly identify only online fantasy league but overall for the industry this is a very positive step we welcome it uh, and on behalf of some of the gaming companies that i represent we we are right. uh, you know all in favor of what's happened and then just take the discussion forward from here you know in fact it's a very valid point that you've raised that how laws from the 60s have now been legitimized by various verdicts by the high courts across the country and all of that for games of skill right uh, uh bridge poker for example so do you think it's just a matter of time that you know and and you think you anticipate that we're going to see regulation or at least attempts at regulation on that front it was very recently as well that the minister of state for finance anurag thakur at a public event also talked about legitimizing sports betting saying why are we allowing the hawala operators to operate why not legitimize that as well so do you realistically see all of this happening no absolutely and i think the minister's comments are uh, in the backdrop of already a justice mudgal report that was submitted to the supreme court when they were hearing the ipl and the bcci matter where even they had recommended that ban is not the option eventually if you want to bring in uniformity transparency the only way to do that is to do regulate because by regulation you can put systemic checks and balances for instance all of these gaming skill based gaming companies these have all received huge amount of foreign investment from credible foreign investors they follow all your kycs all the transaction happens through bank accounts there is a identification of the users there are hours of duration where if a user tries playing more than 4 hours in a day you know they will get a a, a caution and a warning so there is what is known as responsible gaming i mean prime minister uh, modi himself has in his uh, man ki baat articulated that this is one industry that could give a gaming industry given the demographics of this country given the access of internet and the penetration that it's increasing i think this could be one big industry which could uh, you know give a lot of impetus and potential i think particularly after covid where everyone's working from home people are all looking at alternative ways to entertain themselves and this could be a good industry to give that uh, to to give that channel the problem is that each time government machinery looks at banning something what it does not recognize is the fact that you end up proliferating for 
far many to illegal websites which actually for facilitate more hawala transactions that happen under the radar the second issue is that today you know and this is for your audience then dara that today let's assume i come up with a business model as a startup entrepreneur for quiz based gaming or for that matter any sort of gaming which does to my mind involve element of skill the problem is that because there is no uniformity of law eventually what happens is i start my business i raise money i'm scaling up my business and suddenly there will be one public interest litigation in one of the high courts in one of the states in this country where the public interest litigator will say that you know this is nothing but illegal gambling then this matter goes into judicial determination by the relevant court as to whether the games that i'm offering on my platform are games of skill or not and you mentioned poker poker again there is divided opinion even globally on whether that's a game of skill or not but rummy for instance there are supreme court judgment which validates it there is bridge and so on in chess quizzing now the key question here is that therefore it should not be that every entrepreneur is caught with this you know ambiguity that the business that he is doing today you know today i regard this as skill based gaming tomorrow one particular court was to hold it to be as gambling and then my entire business goes for a toss and i am facing criminal prosecution that's in fact the premise of the niti ayog paper as well that what you need is you need a a a let framework a central framework which nudges every state government to walk in a direction where they start regulating it and all skill based genuine gaming where you know all transactions are happening to bank accounts and kyc is what you encourage and that's the direction that we should be looking at and some sort of safe harbor protection for all skill based gaming uh, should be brought in into so the framework so basically like a model code like you drew that example like like a model code like you brought up that right. example which uh, you know highlights it so beautifully with real estate you had rera a model act and every state went ahead and enacted uh, whether you know one of the questions i asked you was why not let the status quo continue because you're attracting some of the world's biggest investors into india's gaming scene right the fear also is that when you try to now come up with regulations uh, sometimes there is a fear that uh, there can be over regulation more governance than what is required so can that make the investor community in your opinion jittery and i'm asking you this simply because you know like i said you have worked on a lot of deals in the gaming space and the other question i want to ask you is that you also keep talking about games of skills but i had dream 11's founder harsh jain on this very show who made a case on how fantasy sports is also a game of skill and if you look at dream 11's models even been dis- uh, discussed at mit Well, I have no doubt in my mind that fantasy league games, when played as per a particular framework, and definitely, I mean, I would vouch for the fact that somebody like Dream Eleven and uh, the 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 governance framework that Harsh has brought in, certainly in those games, will be regarded as games of skill without a doubt. So I completely back that uh, proposition articulated by Harsh. So I'm completely in favor and support that principle that these are all games of skill. The key question really here is your question is that you know is there a need for the central government to step in or some sort of a regulatory code and my answer to you is absolutely unambiguously un- unambiguously yes what is happening as i mentioned to you is notwithstanding the fact that the investment is coming in with every state now trying to ban at least southern states have already banned online skill based gaming even dream 11 cannot offer those games in those states so what is happening is that the valuation that these companies can truly fetch for themselves the money that the investors can put in at the potential of growth that all is obviously getting impacted because of it imagine if none of this ambiguity was there um, i dare say the valuation of these companies including the likes of dream 11 would be way much more than what it is currently fetching and i along with a few of my colleagues are mounting all those challenges in different high courts against those uh, ordinances and legislations that telangana andhra and tamil nadu have brought in what i de- what my apprehension is that if there is no stem to that flow then suddenly other states will also start following soon and that will be a huge dampener and i can confirm to you that the investor community is very worried of the kind of moves different states have done so in that backdrop some sort of a framework which provides safe harbor protection to skill based gaming operators is i think the need of the hour and i think one quick point i'd like to make to you is that again this is an area where different ministries within the government would need to all work together in tandem the sports ministry the ministry of information technology the law ministry and of course niti ayog i think all four will need to come in together for instance right now under the it act there are certain directions and rules that have been prescribed which mandate all the internet service providers that they cannot 
you know, allow users to access any online gambling websites. Now, each of these skill-based gaming operator faces a challenge uh, that, you know, the ISPs get nervous that is your game a game of skill or not? And, you know, skill-based gaming, any betting on skill-based gaming, should that be permitted or not? So I think some sort of safe harbor protection, even under the IT Act, if Meti can bring in, that will go a long way in assuaging the apprehensions of the investor community. And I dare say that if that sort of clarity comes in, the valuations that these companies are fetching may actually, you know, multiply many more fold. And that's where the potential is. Weber, well, with that, I'm going to have to uh, end the discussion. We're running out of time. It's always a pleasure talking to you. Thank you so much for joining us on this edition of the Startup Central. There's the government itself, which is anticipating FTI of more than 10,000 crore rupees in the short term for fantasy sports, keeping that in mind in the massive or should I say the uh, exponential jump in users uh, for fantasy sports the government looking at the proposition of having a uniform set of rules remember all of this will also be governed by states and that's a massive challenge on the other side we'll put the spotlight on yet another acquisition that's taken place in the buzzing edtech space stay tuned